This is KGW News at Noon. And we start with a live look at Pioneer Square, where the Women's World Cup watch party will get going in just a little bit. There will be plenty of things to do and see between now and 6 o'clock when Team USA kicks off its match against Vietnam in Auckland, New Zealand. Thanks for joining us this noon. I'm Brenda Braxton. There are two Portland Thorns players on the team. This is Sophia Smith's first World Cup and she shared this photo on Instagram. That's her playing soccer as a kid and she wrote, what a journey it's been. Crystal Dunn is the other Portland player in the lineup and she's a new mom. She says that's given her a new perspective on the tournament. I feel like I've gained such an incredible perspective that I wouldn't have had before, you know, becoming a mom. And I think um, I'm way more present. Um, I stay in the moment. I appreciate so many little things that I don't even think I, I realized were amazing, such as, a, you know, a touch, a pass, you know, just being able to play this game. I think I, um, I really enjoy so much more now. And, and, you know, being able to see my son in the stands and, and wearing my jersey, like those are just the little moments that are, are so special. Good luck to Team USA. The Americans are going for their third consecutive World Cup title. Also this noon, the world is talking about the passing of Tony Bennett, the one and only. When you think about the iconic crooner, tuxedos, big bands, and smoky jazz joints probably come to mind. But Bennett also influenced many of today's artists. Dan Sheneman takes a look back at the man and his music. Tony Bennett honed his voice in an age of crooners, but what set him apart from the rack pack swingers of that era was that Bennett used his voice to imitate musical instruments instead of other singers. The bright blessed day and the dark sacred night. The man Frank Sinatra called his favorite singer was born Anthony Dominic Benedetto in New York City in 1926. He dropped out of high school at 16 and worked as a singing waiter. His big break came in 1949 when he was hired by entertainer Bob Hope, who advised the vocalist to use the name Tony Bennett. The following year, Bennett signed a record contract and released his first number one song, Because of You. Because of you, the sun will shine. More hits would follow, but none bigger than the one that would become Tony Bennett's signature song. I left my heart. I Left My Heart in San Francisco was released in 1962 and led to the first of Bennett's many Grammy Awards. The tune spent months on the top of the charts, but rock and roll was changing the musical landscape. His record label wanted him to tap into the booming rock and roll market, but Bennett wanted to stay closer to his roots. It's hard to beat the craftsmen of the 30s, you know, they really, they really knew what they were doing and they, the songs will live forever. In the 1970s, he dabbled in contemporary tunes and illicit drugs, a combination that led to a 10-year break from recording altogether. I'm gonna change my way of living. Tony Bennett re-emerged in the 1980s and became a favorite of the MTV generation after hiring his son as his manager. He also mixed with younger singers. Anything goes! Anything goes! Bennett's experience with the down times and the up lent a brassy polish to his voice that echoed through many generations of listeners. Dan Shenneman, NBC News. The best is Other headlines we're tracking this noon. Today, Portland reported its 41st traffic fatality of the year. Southwest Barber Boulevard between 21st and 24th Avenues closed for mo most of the morning as police investigated. The crash happened at 1.30 this morning in the Multnomah neighborhood. Portland police say two cars were involved. One person died, two others were taken to the hospital. A traffic alert begins tonight on Highway 217. It'll be down to one lane heading north between I-5 and Highway 99. This highway improvement project also affects certain on and off ramps and will last through the end of the month. And a member of the Proud Boys will spend the next few years in prison. A judge sentenced Tusi Tala Tosi for his role in a 2021 riot in Portland. 
He received five years but could get out early for good behavior. By the end of this month, people will start moving into a city-sanctioned homeless camp in southeast Portland. It's in the Clinton Triangle and will eventually shelter 180 people. Urban Alchemy runs the site. It'll be a low barrier camp, meaning residents who have drugs or guns won't automatically get thrown out. Urban Alchemy held a meeting yesterday to answer people's questions. Here's the chair of a neighborhood group called the Brooklyn Action Corps. Our opinion in the BAC has always been a housing first policy would be, would be most appropriate. We know this is not a housing first policy, but we also know that we're, you know, we want to make sure that our elected officials have a chance to prove that it will work. The city has a one-year contract with Urban Alchemy. If things are successful, the partnership can be renewed. Well, the old Main Street in downtown Vancouver is getting a makeover next year. We're talking about 10 blocks from 5th to 15th. We have animation showing some of the changes. There will be safer intersections for cars and pedestrians and no curbs. The city envisions a more open feel as people explore Vancouver. It's an area where obviously folks can walk. It's also an area where we'll have furnishings. Uh, we'll have opportunities for businesses to have outdoor seating. Uh, we'll create additional places where people can secure their bikes. People can sit, we'll have art. Um, we've got some art along the corridor. We want to we wanna double and triple the art. The city says contractors won't rip up everything at once. They'll work block by block to minimize the impact on downtown businesses. The work should start early next year and wrap up in late 2025. The price tag for the project will top $20 million. Vancouver says about half of that is federal money from the American Rescue Plan. Well, we have nice warm weather to get out and about this afternoon. Rod's here with a look at the current conditions. Yeah, look at that. You were showing downtown Portland from our Wells Fargo camera. We've cleared out after the morning cloud deck that we had just starting to get out of the morning clouds right here. Astoria from the column. And uh, again, I like to say when Astoria starts to show improvement, we all do. 67 is the temperature there. It is still overcast, by the way, in much of Lincoln County. Here's your Quinta Bay, our live camera in Newport. It is believed you have a good chance to clear out, but not a guarantee, if that makes sense. Here's Stoller Family Vineyard State. Boy, it's starting to look a little brown there, isn't it, from this vantage point. We have the downtown uh, sitting at 71 degrees in Portland. We will stay under 90. I feel pretty good about that. I'm projecting a high this afternoon of 86 degrees. We're actually going to see somewhat similar weather for the weekend. The seven-day forecast, Brenda, is this right? Has as many days in the 70s to no warmer than 80 than we do days above 80. What? I can't even articulate that because it's so unusual for us. I know you never have said that much lately. <laughs> All right, we'll talk more soon. Thank you, Rod. Taylor Swift fans are converging on Seattle for two big shows this weekend, but she's not the only game in town. Coming up this noon, two other events sure to make travel in the city a challenge. Plus, an update on Oregon's largest wildfire. The weather is helping fire crews, but now the wind is sending smoke into California. We'll show you the impact there. And later, Ernest would be proud. It's a Hemingway lookalike contest at some of his favorite haunts.